Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from, from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy awesome and we're live um thanks nick from uh, nick taylor ceo and founder of unmind for joining me today how are you doing i'm very well thank you thanks for having me pleasure pleasure your your view behind you looks beautiful yeah it's a, we we took the decision i've got a family and three small children who are six about to be six three and and one and we took the decision just at the end of last year to move so we moved out of london in halston northwest london to hampshire um and we moved on christmas eve and uh i'm now really glad because we have a quite small place in in london and i think the kids would be really uh jumping around the walls by this point so uh, it's a yeah. beautiful place which is nice to be it's nice my 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 eldest daughter was six yesterday ah, cool. um, and then my other one's three and a half so similar to you we just haven't we haven't jumped in for the third yet, um, but yeah, it's 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 been interesting. How have you found it? Are you are you homeschooling and, and stuff? And yeah, so we are. Yeah, my, my wife's a primary school teacher, um, so that kind of helps with that. But only really the eldest is actually in school. So my middle son's at nursery, so we're teaching him kind of numbers and some basic letters. Yeah. I'm, it's funny because I'm dyslexic, so a lot of what children learn about how to read at that age, I find immensely difficult. Uh, so, so it really takes me right back to like my struggling school days. Yeah, I was awful. I think I was awful at school. Um, but my my kid's going to my kid is going to school at the moment because my wife is in the, is in the NHS. Okay. So um, it's been useful because she definitely does not listen to me when I try and teach her to read and do maths and stuff like that she's got zero interest <laughs> <laughs> yeah. going to the school because i've heard that that's not been taken up as much as they thought it might be um what you mean um how many kids in the school yeah how many um, children are going in during covid yeah i think there's about 10 to 12 um out of a couple of hundred or so that are in the school but the thing is so if if one well, if both parents are, are key workers, then you have no choice. Uh, if one is a key worker and the one that isn't has to work, then you kind of you have to send your kid to school because, you know, for me, if I had both a six-year-old and a three-year-old at home, I mean, can do I could do zero work. Yeah. So, you know, it's pre it's pretty vital. If if maybe the, the 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 partner who's not a key worker isn't working, um then yeah maybe you know depending on on your view on it you'd keep them at home yeah you know we we found it the first couple of weeks really tough that that was the period when it was hardest for us as a family because there was all the adjusting and trying to work out new rhythms and and i realized because previously my my role i would kind of leave the house at seven in the morning and i'd be back at seven at night and i'd be away on trips maybe once a month and and uh, it, and sometimes a bit more um, and the idea of somehow trying to translate that into my house, initially I found really hard because I tried to kind of apply that model into an environment where there were three young children. Um, and of course it doesn't work. So I realized then I had to adjust and I start working much earlier and then take breaks for homeschooling. And my wife and I have kind of been working hard to find a rhythm in, in how kind of we can operate as a couple. Because I think relationships at the moment under, are under tremendous pressure. Um, yeah because yeah. we're having to work in new and wonderful ways um, yeah that's true that's true they say that they say divorce rate and pregnancy rate will both be sky high by the end of this right i mean I, i'm absolutely sure but but actually it's, it, it is scary to think about some of those statistics because um you know i think domestic abuse has been um much higher and and, and that's a big problem there's homicides um um potential risk of going up suicides and i think we'll we'll, um, we'll see a um a kind of a, a tailwind to it as well um as we move yeah. into kind of the impact of on our mental health of, of this period yeah well i think i think the stats from the us were that suicides had gone up 400 percent and calls to helplines like 1500 percent or something like that 
Yeah. You know, I, I don't know that, um, that, that figure, but that, that's um, it's alarming here. Yeah? yeah, I think those might have come from Donald Trump, so don't quote me on them for both of them. But yeah, but, but because the other thing is, you know, obviously we're entering a recession now. I mean, there's the there's the there's the the mental health aspects of staying at home, which we, which we're keen to talk about. But also, as we go into a recession, you know, pretty bad things happen, and you know, it's a very it's a very precarious scenario we're in at the moment. Yeah, finding. absolutely. I, I think that's right, and um, it, it's this kind of it, all the adjustment that we've made to get to where we are today. Um, but of course, this place we're in today is not now the new normal. It will be replaced in the very near future with a new new normal, and people are going to have to change all again and find ourselves in a totally new environment. Um, and that's exhausting, right? I mean, we find change hard enough at the best of times, and, and we're going through really profound social changes every couple of months at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It took me a bit of time to, to get into it because I love, I get a lot of energy from meeting people you know, like a cup of coffee, a cuddle, you know, that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then suddenly, and I never work at home ever. I don't have an office at home that I'd set up or anything like that. My kids are used to me working and coming home and then being with them. And my work at home might be answering emails and stuff like that. So for everyone in my house, it's been very, it's just taken time to adjust. Um, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I, love, I love scheduling things, like I'm quite structured. And so we've kind of had to have done that at home now. So even with exercise, you know, me and my wife usually diarise on a Sunday what we're going to do the following week because you have to go to the gym or go in for a run or whatever. Now it's great. We're, we're doing exercise like every day, <laughs> online Zoom, an online Zoom, because that for me is amazing for my mental health. I, I need to do those things. Yeah. Um, I look, I, I totally agree with you. And funnily enough, actually, we, we've done the same. So I, I'm running more than i've run for years we've got a work <laughs> driver account and, and it's really great doing it as a team and then my wife's going for an hour's bike ride every day she's loving that you know so it's like it's really positive from that and i agree and uh with the physical health on the mental health uh thing because that because um that's widely recognized by the science that actually our exercise is um is so integral to our mental well-being yeah yeah what about what about di your diet while you've been at home? Have you found that you've been you've been eating more healthy? Because you must get some amazing fresh produce in Hampshire. Yeah, do you know? Um, I don't know if we get. I mean, perhaps we do, but we buy from the supermarkets. Right? The only thing the supermarket sells that lo that's local produce is beer. So I'm not sure that's <laughs> not a favour. But but the, the but you no, know, I definitely find I'm eating less snacky food on the on the move because they're. It, there just isn't the same selection so you're not walking if you're in london or any city you're walking past great cafes and you see a coffee and a nice cake and it's like oh god yes. there's there's not so much in the village you know <laughs> no, no 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 it's interesting for my my team we love coffee we probably drink a bit too much so i, I got everyone a nice bag a subscription to a nice bag of coffee so ah. they get a bag once a month which is quite nice um so we kind of feel you know a bit close what have you done with your with your team now how are you so, keeping everyone yeah so so it's been a big change for us as a company so we're, we're coming up to 50 people um now so we we've actually been hiring quite hard during during this period as well um which is brings its own challenges but previously we all had a kind of uh we had a policy of one day a week you could work from home um and we invested a lot in an amazing office space um with great breakout spaces, lovely kitchens, sleep pods, et cetera, gyms. Um, and the reason for that is that we see the inherent value of everyone being together to work on things in person and, and that human connection, et cetera, and the team bonding thing. Um, so for us, this is a very big transformation having to then go fully remote. Having said that, we are a very, very digital company. Um, so we all have the latest technology with Zoom accounts and Slack and all of the Notion and all of those bits of software. Um, so we were well positioned to do it from a tech setup, but not from a cultural perspective. Having said that, the move has been good. Um, it's, you know, I think people, everyone, what we've realized is everyone has a different set of pain points um, in this situation. It could be um, elderly parents they're caring for, it could be children, it could be some secondary health complication it could be the size of that, that where their living accommodation is, et cetera. And making sure that we're adapting 
to kind of be sympathetic and compassionate and supportive of everyone's unique circumstances. Um, we put in place a couple of um, things that we thought would be helpful. So a kind of internal wiki page all about home working. Uh, we schedule um, regular all hands to get together on Zoom, um, kind of at the start of the week, at the end of the week. Um, and, and also every day we start with a, li one diff a different person each day records a, a short one minute video that they then upload at the start of the day, some of which have been absolutely hilarious and like really well put together. Others of which really kind of genuine, authentic kind of short videos of saying hi. But the idea being like, rather than sit down at your computer first thing and see a Slack message, you're sitting down and seeing your colleague's face talking to you as a person. So little things like that. That's really nice. How have you, I've spoken to a lot of, of people leading businesses and what they've, cha the challenge has been really understanding how people have been feeling. Because you know, you, you kind of hop on a video call and, and you put your best face on and then you stick a, a jumper or t-shirt or whatever. You know, when you're meeting someone face to face, you can you can read their nonverbal communication, right? You can see if someone's feeling but, yeah. but on, over the video it's a bit more difficult. How have you gone about just making sure people are okay, you know, if they're living on their own or whatever different scenario they might be in? Yeah, that's right. I mean I think there's a few things to do there. One is that making sure that in Zoom calls you're making time. Uh, to speak with people about how they are, as well as what the purpose of the call is. Um, I think that's been really, really important. And then collectively, the people who are kind of managing teams, making sure that we are supporting one another to support our teams. Um, and then also we, we keep a, a kind of pulse check on, the, on people's well-being, um, both through kind of uh, in software that tracks engagement, but also through the unmind assessment tools where you can see an aggregated anonymized scores of how the company is doing. Um, and we have a very, very uh, uh, transparent business culture and um, very supportive business culture. And obviously, as you would hope and expect, uh, given that we're a mental health company, um, we have a very open conversation around our mental health. Um, and I think that enables people to speak more freely about how they're feeling um, and how they're doing. Awesome. Do you want to just, just run through what Unmind is? Yeah, Unmind is a workplace mental health platform. So what we do, you can kind of think about it in two buckets. The first is that we um, empower employees in organizations to look after their mental health proactively. And we do that by giving them access to our digital platform, which is essentially a, a suite of tools and assessments um, that they can use to look after their mental health. And when we talk about proactively, what we're really thinking about is like mental health is something we have from the moment we're born to the moment we die. Um, literally it's with us every single moment of our entire life, like our dental health, like our physical health. And, and as you know, I'm no doubt this morning you woke up and brushed your teeth. Uh, we've already spoken about the benefits of exercise, you know, so you know, we know that prevention and healthcare is very important, but with mental health for a long time, it's kind of been in the dark really. And we haven't focused on prevention. We've only talked about it when problems occur, but the reality is we should be looking after mental health proactively and kind of really taking care of it on a daily basis. The second part, the area of what we do is that we aggregate and anonymize the well-being scores of the employees so that organizations can understand how their people are doing um, on a global level and that allows them to then strategically invest to make sure that people are getting the right care at the right time and what i would just really emphasize is the anonymity of that so an organization will never be able to see what joe bloggs mental health scores are they'll never see that but they'll understand that, okay, their, their team is showing heightened levels of anxiety at this point. Um, so that's what we do. Interesting. Have you, is, is, do you find a difference between men and, and women engaging in, in, in mental health conversations? Yeah, that's really interesting. Typically, what you see is women will engage in it more. So if you, I, prior to on mind, I was a clinical psychologist uh, leading a, a team in the National Health Service. Um, so I'm very used to kind of analysing waiting lists and engagement data and things. Um, and, and typically you will see more women engage in mental health services and talk about mental health. Um, and there's yeah. variations according, uh, according to parts of the world you're in. Um, but, but actually I think one of the things about digital mental health is that um, because it's anonymous, people can engage in it without any stigma and without any fear of others um, thinking oh, that why they're engaging in their mental health piece of software. Um, so I think that mitigates that. And the other thing is, because we're talking about mental health, something we all have all of the time, it's not just about stress, anxiety, depression, and suicide. 
It's about, you know, how are you focusing in the morning? How are you communicating with your loved ones? Um, you know, how are you getting to sleep at night, etc. And that makes it much more engaging. That's really cool. So, so is it kind of like, so they ask, they ask me questions. How are you feeling? What are you up to? And then it will, it will then feed that data back to the line manager or whatever. No, not quite like that. So what, what happens is um, when you first come onto the online platform, and the first thing is you can choose what you wish to do. So it's not a prescribed journey. Um, but one of the things we encourage users to do is to complete what's called the online index. And that's an assessment that we developed in house. It gives you scores across your mental health from areas such as coping, calmness, happiness, sleep, et cetera. And, and based on your unique scores, the platform will then make recommendations for what you might find most helpful. And those recommendations might be complete a learning and development program that we call series on, let's say, getting to sleep better or managing anxiety or um, understanding mental health. Um, or it could be tools which are ad hoc exercises that take anything from about one minute to about 30 minutes to complete and range from things like stretches, yoga, mindfulness, audio things. It's really varied. And then also and then, what we do is sign best to other services as well. So it's about integrating care. Brilliant. And then the mindfulness, the yoga, is that in integrated into your platform? Yeah, absolutely. So we work with um, the world's kind of leading authors, academics, clinicians, people with lived experience to bring to life their often lifetime of work and multiple books or academic papers into bite-sized chunks so that people can use their insights and wisdom to help with their own mental health, but never taking more than just a couple of minutes a day. Brilliant. Mindfulness seems to have really uh, increased in popularity recently. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a huge trend, hasn't it? And, 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 yeah. and I think that there's enormous value in, in practicing mindfulness. Um, but in, it's worth remembering that in many ways, practicing that being mindful is practicing being in the present moment. And human beings are very, very good at thinking about the future and thinking about the past and often with a negative tinge of worrying about things that happened or feeling anxious about things in the future um, and actually being present in the moment is very helpful. But mindfulness is not for everyone. And, and that's why it's so important especially in a workplace digital mental health platform, to be varied in your offering. Because if you're a 100,000 person workforce, some people will love mindfulness, some will really not like it at all. Um, so you need to make sure there's something for everyone, which is what we try and do. That's true. Talking about in the moment, it feels like most people are probably thinking about the, the moment that they're in now, right? Locked in, working from home. Have you, have you, seen, uh, have you seen any interesting trends? On, on anxiety and depression or, or anything from the data over the past like few weeks? Yeah, we have. I mean, we've, so we've seen some quite interesting things um, around that. And particularly, a couple of things interesting. Some, some you might expect, like heightened anxiety scores or stress. Um, sense of connection um, is, is also elevated, which is quite interesting. And I think that people have commented around that kind of sense of um, community that's being formed through this. Um, yeah. Very nice. interesting. Why I, I, I'm almost speaking more to my team now than I would do. I would have done normally. Like you know, someone comes in the office, you have a little chat. Now it's like, right, we've got the TPM call. We've got you've got to record a video for your team. It's quite. It's it's very interesting. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and we're looking out for one another. You know that that question you asked, like how, how are you checking in? I think I think for everyone I've spoken with, it's become much more normal at the moment to ask people like, how are you? Um, and yeah. in, in a beautiful way, because we are so great, especially in this country, like the automated, like, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. And then into business. No yeah. one ever does that. And no one's engaged in that conversation normally. But now I think we are. We're doing a bit better with it. Yeah, no, definitely. Because oh, I was, I, I would have said, I mean, no one's mentioned this for a long time, but Brexit, um, end of last year, just before the election, it felt like the country was, you know, more divided than ever, right? Like 50% leave, 50% remain. And also living in London where I live, again, you can almost never speak to your neighbour. You can get up, you go to work, you come back. And, and, and it can be quite a lonely place, London, you know, if you're not if you're not plugged into a into a network. The wonderful thing, and, and maybe the silver lining amongst this, is it feels like the country's really pulled together. And and even in my, you know, in my street, I mean, everyone's really genuinely, you know, how are you feeling? Can I get you some shopping? We have a um, a postcode WhatsApp group. You know, if anyone needs any help, and so it, it really feels like it really feels good. You know, people are feel like they're in it together, and it's a it's a weird, a weirdly nice feeling. Yeah, look, I, I totally agree, and um, 
I know there's been a lot of people, and I'm really, I'm not commenting on this, but there's been a lot of people like say this is the worst crisis since the war. I think Boris Johnson commented on it yesterday. And I, our generation, we've grown up and got quite used to hearing about like the wartime spirit. Um, and, and that idea of that sense of community, which of course was very alien to us. To, to, your, to your point, like the last two houses I've moved down to in London, um, I've been struck by how few people are to say goodbye to. Um, you know, and, and which I've always thought is very odd. But, but I think one of the silver linings of this, um, if, there, if there is such a thing, is that people are very connected. And I really hope we, we hold on to that. I don't know if you saw, but the mayor of New York gave quite an interesting talk um, a couple of days ago where he was saying like it's not about just reopening New York it's about kind of reimagining what do we want to what, what world do we want to go into now and I think that's a really great point you know we shouldn't just be looking at as it when are we getting back to normal it should be like what do we want the new normal to feel and look like and I hope that we retain that community spirit in that yeah, no, definitely. The one thing, just going back to the war, your your war example, the thing, obviously, I don't remember the war, but the thing that, that always pops in my mind from the UK is that is the videos of the women working, making ammunition, knitting, whatever, like they were doing things at home because they, they weren't allowed to go to the front line. And that were they were really positive stories about community and spirit. The thing I've noticed here is just, you know, it's the negativity you read in the papers. There's very few positive stories about how people are coming together to make PPE equipment or contributing. And there's so many positive stories that you can share. Um, it's a shame. Like, I'd like to see more positive, positive news. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point. What was Captain Tom, is, it? is, that, is that his name? The guy that's raised all this money for... Um... For, for, for the NHS, and then also he's had his first number yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a great new positive news story. But, but that's an interesting example, like, and, I, and I'm not a historian, but, but I believe that the, um, when, during the war, when um, there was a, a workforce shortage and women then went into the factories and various other roles to fill the gap, I think one of the societal impacts of that movement was um, acceleration of the women's rights movement um, and widespread recognition that actually there was a great injustice in the inequality that women faced at, prior to the war in the workplace. Um, so that's a very tangible positive that came out from a societal perspective and you wonder what will we see tomorrow in the world that we didn't have yesterday and maybe it's in the UK specifically something around the NHS um, again, and like remembering the core value that many people in the country kind of put onto the, into the NHS, um, but we'll see. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. It's quite humbling when Mother Nature tells you to stay in your room for six months <clears throat> so she can recover. Because it, you know, the global warming thing's interesting. You know, we've been talking a lot about it. We're staying in our rooms, and you know, be very. I, I'm fascinated with what the future of work is going to look like. Are we going to go back to you know, growth, 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 and, you know, all this kind of stuff, or are we just going to take a moment to reflect on what is important and I, maybe change the habits? I, I, I worry about it a lot because, I, like, my, my sister lives, my, a lot of my family live down on the south coast and showing a picture from Portsmouth of um, the sea, saying how clear it was because the channel's so quiet. Um, and then you see lots of videos of like dolphins coming out where they've never seen goats going into Welsh towns and things like that. And like, that's so heartening. My concern is that human beings are very driven by growth and we're aspirational creatures. And therefore it's hard for us not to accelerate, more so naturally competitive. So if one country, for example, accelerates again, then the other countries around it will. So I, 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 I'm actually feeling not terribly optimistic about that, but I would love to feel optimistic that the environmental kind of, revelation that has been reduced human activity continues to have some sort of impact I'd, I'd love that to happen i'm just yeah i'm also not so sure that will but is, is the way you and your team work going to change now like can you can you see a fundamental shift in in how your team are organized and, and work or i was talking to one of my co-founders about that the other night um i think there's a lot of unknowns aren't there um yeah. I think you can look at it both ways. I know there's been a lot of commentary around um, remote working and freedom and working styles becoming more prevalent. And I can understand the, the logic of how people reach that conclusion. Um, but I also think that 
I hear just as often people saying, like you said earlier, like I miss seeing people. Um, and therefore, as much as like we've probably all learned to find new ways to be productive, I think we've probably all rec learned to recognize the value of the, that human connection that we took for granted before. Um, so I don't know which way it will swing. It will be quite interesting. I think probably different companies will try different things. Yeah. And I think hopefully more people will have more choice because people are more productive in different ways. Yeah. And, you know, if you're if you're able to choose, that would be cool. And then, I mean, certainly financially, much better for companies to have less office space in London. Right. Um, yeah. and, and whether they need so much. And I, and I see that certainly as a, as a trend. Um, yeah, start, yeah. And as we start to go back to work over a period of time, you know, you have people that are like, you know, you can come in two days a week she can come in here this week and so it's going to be a very interesting transition to you know the new what i said the new normal but things change so quickly now but it's, it's been... and, and i don't know how i was talking to a founder of a company in san francisco the other day and you could almost like hear the, the kind of joy in his voice at the prospect of not having to have an office there anymore it's just so <laughs> um but uh, uh because of the cost but but you know yeah. uh I, I think that, yeah, I, I just think it's going to be a lot of learning for us and we all need to go into it with a very open mind, basically. Um, the idea of choice is a nice idea that that is retained somehow. Yeah. How have you found recruiting at the moment? Um, well, it, it's interesting because, of course, it's harder in some respects because, again, to your point, like you, when you're actually in the presence of someone, you get so much more than when you're on Zoom, right? Or a video call, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, because you can, we're so, we're so clever at reading body language, um, often unconsciously, uh, just picking vibes up. And that determines of when you're growing a company and you're wanting people to join, it's not just about competence, it's about character and cultural fit and all of those kind of things. Um, and yeah. that's harder to work out on video. So on the one hand, it's harder. On the other hand, and, and there's a sadness in this um, um, on a macro level, um, there are many companies that are struggling at the moment and letting people go. Um, so there's a lot of brilliant talent on uh, looking for new and exciting roles. Um, so the, the talent pool, I think, has opened up quite a lot for companies that are still growing at the moment, like on mine. Um, there, are, there are so many exciting people to speak with. Um, but I recognize that that's a... That, that's a sadness for many, many people. Um, so I'm not being believed. No, no, no. We've just had a shift. I run a, an executive search firm. And, and the sad thing is I have hundreds of people messaging via LinkedIn or whatever a day just asking for help. Um, you know, how do I find a job in these times? Can you give me some advice? You know, things like that. So we've dedicated an hour or two every day to get back to everyone that's that's got in touch with us. And wow. we've seen really, yeah. Well, people need help now. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's such a, a tough moment overall, you know, and every industry is a bit different. I mean, some are, are doing great. You know, you guys are hiring. Amazon have hired 175,000 people in the last six weeks or something. So th th there's obviously pockets. Um, overall, it's a really tough moment. And we've, we've now moved from, um, call it a seller's market. So it's been very candidate-led, right? If you're a, it's been hard to find great people for companies. And now we've seen um you're seeing a big shift into a kind of a buyer's market um have you that particularly in some areas or yeah i think uh, overall i it definitely there's a trend now towards um if you think about over the next you know the next six months to a year um you know as the furlough scheme ends people will make more redundancies unfortunately um different industries are affected different more differently and we'll see how that that goes over the next six months to a year um you know some some have been fine i mean some of these technology companies such as yourselves you know a strong um um Ocado, amazon things like that um retail obviously very difficult financial services generally okay healthcare again fine i mean it's it, it, it's really variable there's obviously some also underlying trends that have been affecting um companies such as digitalization and you know cost bases going down so there's a lot of other trends going on but i but i think this is going to be uh quite substantial unfortunately i, I think i think it's, it's interesting to think about those trends and what, one of the trends that we are definitely part of but are noticing globally is this um, movement from digital mental health services 
uh, being considered a kind of novelty part of an overall healthcare solution to now a widespread recognition that they are an integral part of the future of healthcare. Um, and I think physical health, as typically you see, right, the physical health world was slightly ahead of the curve from where the mental health world was. So we, we've all got used to like digital doctors. Um, that's become more commonplace in the, even within the National Health Service. But I think now the, the kind of digital movement on mental health, especially for corporates, um, has reached a tipping point and, and will you know, be considered as an essential component of all wellbeing strategies uh, from here on in. Oh, definitely. Every every big company I speak to has has is offering something, and it's it's been on the agenda, and it's top of the agenda on, on almost everywhere. Um, and especially when you have scenarios like this, where you know it's it's an event you can't control, and so many people let external factors affect how they feel and how they think, um, which is not very productive. But easier said than done, right? A lot of people need help in just you know just decompressing a little bit from these things yeah that's absolutely right yeah so it's very interesting well look great to speak to you it sounds like you're doing some brilliant things um hopefully we get to meet in person one day who knows <laughs> yes and um, some of your hampshire beer along <laughs> um, <laughs> but i uh, know really good to speak to you and, and good luck with everything thank you and you too and thanks for having me on pleasure